How hard is the new Sunken Temple raid? Guys, this is one of the most overtuned raids we've ever, it's probably the most overtuned raid we've ever had in classic World of Warcraft. And it's actually really fun. The mechanics are a lot of fun. There's a lot going on, but the bosses have some insane amounts of HP. So I'm just gonna show you things really quickly. Just look at this, this boss or this mob, just a normal trash mob, 158, thousand HP for reference actually let's even go further let's go towards something like this boss right here this is the boss that literally as of the time of this recording no guild in the world has killed this boss so far and it is a really really this is where we'll get to but look at this four million HP that is four times the HP of level 60 40 man Ragnaros that's right, four times its HP. It's almost a million more HP than Kel'Thuzad, which is the final boss in the entire expansion of World of Warcraft Classic, a 40-man raid in Naxxramas. It is also the exact HP, basically slightly more than Patchwork, also more HP than Gruul. Now there's some bosses that are really easy and some bosses that are really hard. I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of all of those right now. But first of all, just as a comparison to Gnomer, this is like, this is, I would be surprised if this doesn't get nerfed by the time I wake up in the morning. This will absolutely be nerfed. Agron has already posted saying they're gonna look into the tuning. Uh, your average guild is gonna absolutely struggle in here and that is just basically a fact. So let's look at the beginning so near the beginning the first boss is gonna be all the way at the bottom of this little platform you're gonna click these little things i don't know what to call them these altars all right the atali statues and you need to click all six of them to be able to make the first boss kind of just weaker once you click them it will spawn these sons of hakar behind you these have 250 thousand hp Again, that is one fourth of literal Ragnaros just for these. Now they don't hurt you a lot. They just take a long time to kill. So instead of killing them, what we decided to do a little bit later, and let's see if we can show it maybe. Perfect. What we decided to do a little bit later is each time we actually took these on, I just tamed them. Literally, instead of killing something that had 250,000 HP, taking three minutes to kill it or something, uh, two minutes, I don't know. We just tamed it. You can tame these as a hunter, just tame it, and then you can dismiss it and it's gone. Uh, I was playing Lone Wolf, so I didn't have a normal pet. This character is like a fresh hunter. So that was pretty easy. Now, if we look at the boss, doo -doo 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 -doo. the first boss is a Toleron already, probably, I mean, harder than almost anything in Nomer, except for maybe, maybe the the council fight in Nomer the first time, but the first boss is definitely a check. A lot of raid-wide damage will go out. The boss will drop these pillars on the ground and then drop dragons on those pillars. He will get stronger for each pillar that is here, so he will start whomping the tank even harder. Then he will do, like you'll see these pillars, by every time he casts that, it'll spawn more pillars and do AOE damage. Then he'll do a dem dem demolishing smash. I really can't think right now, I haven't slept. Um, which will knock everybody back. It knocks you back. If you go knocked, if you get knocked back into a pillar, it will get rid of those pillars, which then makes the boss a little bit weaker. But if you don't get knocked into the pillars, one, I believe you take more damage, and two, the boss will get stronger, not clearing the pillars, and you'll just die. Like your, your tank won't be able to live through it. So this is already with tank busting mechanics, but you only, I believe, need one tank. Technically, when he does the knockback, he drops threat and knocks one tank up in the air. So technically you can do a tank swap there. Just have another tank or the second tank taunt it when the first tank gets knocked into the air. That is the first boss. Definitely a step up in difficulty from Nomer already. The second boss is the ooze boss. This guy, is dead, like this guy already will kill pugs for sure. Okay, so first of all, the boss has 2 million HP, twice the HP of Ragnaros. Now it will slowly move around the circle and it will throw this poison on everybody. As you can see the poison get on everyone. It, the poison will slow you. I think it's like a 60% slow. All right, 
The one you get the poison or disease cleanse, you drop these poison clouds on the ground. That is the soft enrage. As you follow through the entire circle, once you get back to these sections, if you haven't defeated the boss already, then you will just see poisons all over the ground and they take for like 500 a second. Now, to, the way to slow the boss down, because the boss moves really, really fast towards you, is to kill all of these things on the side. You see these little inanimate objects, you'll just need to defeat them. So just burn their HP, which is not not that much, I think it's like 2000 HP. Bur yeah, 2200 HP, burn that and it'll push them to the center, which then the boss will pick up in his sludge and it'll slow him down. And then eventually he will just expel all of them and start casting a bunch of AOE damage to you. So that is what's going on here. So we're bringing them here, hopefully into the middle. They do despawn if they're in the middle for too long. So that's actually a little bit scary, especially right now as he's fighting the pets. This is our first attempt, so this isn't the actual kill, but once you do that, you'll defeat those, he'll chase you, drop the poisons on the side, and just keep running. It is definitely actually a tank buster mechanic that will, will be harder than, this is actually potentially harder than, than all bosses in, in Nomer, maybe, I don't know, whatever. All right, third boss. Third boss, actually fourth boss, I guess. Fourth boss is really, 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 really simple. The fourth boss is just a gauntlet and you'll fight one boss at a time. Um, once you defeat that boss, it will respawn as a ghost, which can be shackled or CC'd, hunter CC, anything can CC him. You just need to defeat the main boss. Don't even attack the ghosts. Then the next one will come out. It is just that on repeat. It's actually super simple. Um, some of them have like AOE abilities, AOE damage. As you can see, this AOE damage, I typed out ax, but it just follows him around, everyone will take it. Melee, it, it's some damage. One of them has thorns, which hurts you way more than that one. And once you defeat the last one, you can see as they're all just CC'd, it's done and you get some loots. Perfect. Now, bum, 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 bum. Dream Weaver and Scythe Weaver, the dragons. This one is definitely more of a step up. The easiest way to do this that we've found so far, four tank it, four tank it, just use four tanks because each dragon will put a stacking debuff, a poison debuff on the tanks that will do a ton of just damage over time. It's a dot. Uh, if you get three stacks of this, your tank is probably going to die. So once you get one or even two, two tanks, do a tank swap. The reason why you need four tanks is because at 60% the, the dragon swaps. So let me show you the first phase or it's at 80% actually. At 80%, the dragon swap, Dream Scythe will swap with the next one. So he will run away and the next one, the Weaver will come by. Okay, and then you will deal with Weaver and they have this knockback mechanic as you just saw. They will just do a knockback, tries to hit you into the, the middle, but it happens every now and then. I think it's like 15 or 10 or 15 seconds. So you'll see us just fighting this boss right now, doing a little bit of damage and you'll notice it in a second. The boss is gonna run away to the, to the corners and then he'll do his knockback. We'll see when it happens. Perfect, the boss runs away. Now he'll do his knockback mechanic. If you're standing right here, you'll get knocked over the portal. But if you're standing right on the boss, you might get knocked inside or into the ground. Now, once you get to, I believe it's 60%, let's see, 64, 63, 61, 60. Once you get to 60%, then both bosses will come. So you'll see them run away. Both bosses will come. They'll both do the knockback mechanic and it'll always be the large dragon first. So you'll see I will get knocked back to my right and then backwards. The large dragon first, Dream Scythe first. So boom, I didn't get knocked because I resisted and then here. Now from here, it's basically just making sure you deal with the tank swaps. Um, the boss will do some knockbacks, but if you do a four tank strategy, it's like, incredibly easy just just grab four tanks uh it makes the fight super easy okay moving on moving on uh, nightmare dragons let's see hazas that's the next one all right so hazas this is actually the simplest fight of all time it has four million hp there is a tank swap and that's like it. Don't stand in front of the boss. Don't stand behind the boss. At 60 or 70%, the boss will do like a, 
Here we go. At 80%, actually, I believe it is. Let's see. Let's see right now. Perfect. At 80%, the boss will start casting a Dream Realm thing. He will send you to the Dream Realm. First, you defeat these ads that it spawns. You see Lucid Dream. You defeat all the ads that it spawns and then just LOS. Literally, don't even go into the Dream Realm until it's patched. Don't go into the Dream Realm. Just LOS this, this, just hide back here line of sight and you're fine. You skip the entire thing, boom, done. And then you just get to run back out. The flames will drop a flame on the ground. If you run through the flame, then you get movement speed increase, but you also can't stop moving. And then you'll see this eternal slumber. Technically, if you were in the dream realm, by the time that this cast ends, then the boss one shots you and this happens at 30 percent also and then it's like a crazy crazy dps check that's potentially impossible but not really we'll be able to do it but then it'll be a dps check so this 30 percent one it's a lot faster of a cast just los right away instantly los and then the boss is dead once he's done casting just take him back here and the boss is down there you go now after that uh, i guess i skipped a tall eye yeah, Jamal the Prophet. I skipped Jamal the Prophet. Um, there's two bosses in this that you have to deal with. First, burn Ogum the Wretched, and then they will actually, then they'll just uh, like merge with, with each other. You can see that I'm finally doing damage. We actually decided to use some physical debuffs, even though we don't have uh, Wind Fury or now we have Battle Shout. So we don't have Wind Fury or um, Fairy Fire, but now I can actually pump. But, all right, once you defeat the first one, Ogum, then he will merge with Jamal. Jamal will get bigger, and then you have to defeat Jamal. So he's like, well, let me drain you, and then you have to defeat Jamal. Um, there's a ton of raid-wide damage that goes out here. Shamans are phenomenal. Resto Druids, also phenomenal. Again, this boss, 1.6 million health. I anticipate they cut that in more than half tomorrow i mean realistically uh but it's that one's actually pretty easy the boss that's incredibly hard is the shade of aranicus okay shade of aranicus this is the boss that everyone is basically stuck on let me show you from a alliance or a horde pov let me show you shindig let me show you a horde pov because it is almost impossible for alliance literally almost impossible for alliance unless you use a ridiculous amount of consumables because the boss will put okay so the boss will do a breath you do a tank swap on the breath because if the breath hits the the tank they lose 100 percent of their armor you can just use target dummies to cheese this it makes it super easy then the boss will spit out those poisons towards the ranged ideally and there's these poison clouds now if you run into the poison cloud you will get slept which stuns you for 10 seconds that's not good you don't want that um then the boss will also do aoe you'll see that i use target dummy now it eats the breath the boss will do an aoe poison so he puts in poison on everybody which you need to poison cleanse because it takes you for 600 damage every three seconds and if you are horde you can just use shaman's poison cleansing tomes totems it makes it infinitely easier if you are alliance you need druids uh, and paladins to just be spamming this. It's something like, I mean, by 70% on the boss, you've probably casted 48 globals as one paladin. It, that's like a real, like a literal real number. 48 globals as one paladin just to dispel. Then the boss will do Waking Nightmare, which will kill you if you are not asleep. So you just run into the poison clouds to make yourself go to sleep. And then the boss will send out more poisons. And it's like every minute, or every like uh, 10 to 15 seconds, he puts poisons on like a third of the raid, it seems like. So if you're Alliance, you're gonna need Elixir of Poison Resistance, probably like 50 of them. And I think they're at a gold already. So you'll need like 50 of them uh, as Alliance. Just be aware, you'll need an incredible amount to, to down them. So this is gonna be, per pull, it's probably gonna cost your guild like 500 gold. Per, per, per pull, even if you guys can't kill it. And again, the boss has 4 million HP. At 70%, he goes into the next phase. Let me show you guys again why uh, Hoarder just so good here. Let me see. Oh, they're locked out, unfortunately. But it's just Poison Cleansing Totem, totem literally is just infinitely good. Uh, and I think this will be nerfed tomorrow at 
60 or 70% the boss starts spawning ads. He kind of like takes a nap and then goes into an ad phase. You have to deal with those and the boss at the same time. A lot of AOE damage. This is incredibly tuned. And currently, as of right now, guilds have been in here for like, I don't know, I want to say like eight hours, seven hours, and uh, nobody in the world has killed this boss. And it's not even the last boss. There's one more. So we will go again tomorrow and see how it goes. But Blizzard has already mentioned that there will be tuning. That is just how hard the raid is. It's like, it's, I mean, it, it's, it's impossible for your average group. Um, and it's, currently has not been killed by the best groups in the world, but the best groups in the world all rushed to get to level 50 with really bad comps. And that is probably what's holding everybody back um, on the Horde side. Alliance, it's just it's just gonna be like in, infinitely expensive to defeat that boss. I, I doubt any Alliance Guild gets it other than maybe us and Resist by tomorrow morning. Um, so we'll see how it goes, but the raid is really fun. They just need, the trash takes forever. But I think they've done a great job with phase three so far. So I'll see you guys all tomorrow with updates after stream.